So first, what we're going to be covering is the four pillars of the ATM business, because at the end of the day, if you want to be successful in a business, you have to have the foundation. And then right after that, we're going to cover this actually how you can start your BTM business without any personal funds, guys. And that's going to be with seven figure Alex. And if you don't know who he is, he is an expert in funding. He has multiple businesses. I don't want to break down everything he does already, but he's going to be hopping on after that. And then guys, we're going to finish it off strong. So I'm actually going to cover the fastest way you can start your BTM business in 2023 with ATM together, guys. All right, all right, all right, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's weekly live. I am Ganem Yona, CEO of ATMtogether.com. I am your host for today. And it is, what is it? March 21st, um, a little bit after St. Patty's Day. So shout out to everybody that celebrated St. Patty's Day. Hopefully you're recovering, especially if you drank a little bit too much. All right. But welcome to this week's live. In case you guys don't know what this is, we have a weekly live every single Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. We have been doing this since January of 2021. It is March of 2020. 2023, I think. So it's been over two years, guys. That should tell you something. That's how committed we are to the ATM business. This is where we drop free gems. We cover the business, cover entrepreneurship, and we just tell some good stories, guys. So first of all, I want to welcome you guys for joining. And I want to see where you guys are actually watching from. So comment below the city and state you're watching from today. I'm actually in the Bay Area, California, guys. And if you're in the Bay Area, you know it's storming. I barely made it on time, guys. So I want to know where you guys are watching from. And I know if you're in the East Coast, it's probably snowing right now and you're thinking, man, 60 degrees and rain, boo-hoo, right? But it's all good, all right? And if you're watching this on YouTube, guys, just remember, we are pre-recording this. So make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And if you're watching this live, guys, make sure you check us out on YouTube, which is youtube.com forward slash the at sign and ATM together. Real simple. So I'm seeing some people, Rincon, Georgia, that's what I'm talking about, from the 707, Southern California, shout out. Las Vegas, Nevada, North Texas, Orange County. Okay. A few different areas, guys. A few different areas. So with that being said, guys, if you're watching this live right now, right? And you probably lost me for a second. But if you're watching this live, make sure you comment the word live below. And if you're watching a replay, meaning that maybe it's a week from now, maybe it's a month from now, or maybe it's a year from now, and you just needed a recap on this lesson, make sure you comment replay. And the reason why is because I will follow up. I don't care if it's a year from now, I will follow up on your comment. If you need some free resources, we'll make it happen, all right? And this also helps with the algorithm. We didn't build to be the biggest ATM and BTM group in the world for no reason, guys. It wasn't a coincidence. We know what we're doing. We're making sure you guys get the information. So help us out with the algorithms, guys, all right? Now, with that being said, we have some phenomenal lessons today, but before I even get into our training plan, all right, that's how serious it is. It's a training plan. I want to go over a few announcements. So Paul Alex is actually in Georgia right now. He's on a podcast, major podcast. It's actually with a Nehemiah Davis. He was a huge influencer among different communities. He actually has an entire program, breaks down other businesses, guys. So Paul's going to be featured on one of his podcasts. It's going to be dropped, I think maybe this weekend. They're recording it live right now. So if you guys want a copy of that podcast, it's going to be phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I'm talking about, he's going to be talking about entrepreneurship, ATMs, and uh, oh, he's sending me text messages. Stop telling them like my topics right now, all right? <laughs> so if you want a copy of this podcast before it even drops, we can send it to you because we're all about our community first, all right? Make sure you comment the word passive. Comment passive because it is a passive business we are referring to, guys. And we'll follow up with you when we have that link for the podcast. You'll be the first to get it, guys, before it even drops, all right? Second of all, something special. So let me see if I can share my screen. We got something cool we're going to be on, guys. So May 14th to the 18th, all right? Hopefully the weather is better by then, right? But we're going to be on an actual cruise. So let me see if I can actually share my screen, guys. The internet is like literally freezing. So this might even take me out, but it's all right. We'll take the risk, all right? So Teach Week Investor Cruise, guys. Let's see if this pops up. And I think it's here. There we go. So you can go to teachweekinvestor.com. That's going to be May 14th to the 18th. This is basically going to be a passive income cruise, right? So there's all these different speakers that are going to be on here. 
we're going to be featured on there. Myself and Paul, we're going to be talking about ATMs, BTMs, and some other special stuff. And if you like our lives, man, it's going to be good in person. So myself right now, I'm working out. I'm making sure I have the beach body because I can't be showing up and not stepping the game up. All right. So make sure you prepare for this event, guys, because you're going to get your tan in. You're going to get your drinking probably, but also you're going to be learning about different business opportunities. So that's going to be May 14th to the 18th. We're actually being featured on this. So if you want to join, just let us know, guys. You can also go to teachweekinvestor.com. Right. So with that being said, a few more things, guys. I'm almost done. Right. We actually have a free BTM location, guys. How many guys want to actually know how to qualify for this? Why don't you comment location below? If you're interested, you're interested in potentially getting a free BTM. You know what? We'll say an ATM location too. Comment location below just so we have the information out there. All right. And here's the reason why. I'm going to bring this up. It's going to be at the end of this presentation. At the end of the live, I'm going to break down exactly how you watching this live right now can get a free BTM or ATM location, guys, right? And speaking of locations, I want to make sure I bring up the actual premium BTM. And that's Bitcoin ATM locations we have available, guys. So it's in a few different cities and states. If this is one of your locations, like you're actually physically located there, you got family or something, maybe even your grandma's out there, make sure you comment me. All right. If you're in one of these areas, because we have premium BTM locations available. So Chicago, Illinois, guys, Chicago, we got Philadelphia, Detroit, Houston. And then when you mention Houston, of course, what do you got to mention? You got to mention DFW, the Dallas Fort Worth area, guys. So if you're in one of these areas and you want some more information on one of these premium BTM locations available, comment me below. Either myself after this live, I'll reach out one of the team members, maybe even Paul himself. I think he's watching in Georgia right now. All right. So let's go into exactly what we're going to be covering today, guys. All right. So today is going to be a phenomenal presentation. I'm extremely excited, right? I can't even, I can't even sit down on these lives. That's how excited I get. All right. So today is going to be good. So first, what we're going to be covering is the four pillars of the ATM business. Because at the end of the day, if you want to be successful in a business, you have to have the foundations. We're going to cover the pillars. And then right after that, we're going to cover this actually how you can start your BTM business without any personal funds, guys. And that's going to be with Seven Figure Alex. And if you don't know who he is, he is an expert in funding. He has multiple businesses. I don't want to break down everything he does already, but he's going to be hopping on after that. And then, guys, we're going to finish it off strong. So I'm actually going to cover the fastest way you can start your BTM business in 2023 with ATM together, guys, right? And then after that, you know what? We're going to have our three lessons, but I'm going to cover exactly how you can actually get a free BTM or, you know what, I'm going to add that, like I said, ATM location. So make sure you stay tuned, guys. Watch it till the end, okay? And then, of course, we're pre-recording this for our YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button because there's phenomenal content, guys. And if you guys check out our YouTube channel, I'm telling you, we have YouTube shorts and I understand you guys are probably wondering, like, the heck's a YouTube short? I'm not talking about, like, the Lululemon shorts. I'm talking about, there's, like, these short reels. I mean, I'm dating myself. I barely had social media, and now I'm learning all the stuff that's out there. But stuff is going viral. So you guys can say, hey, you know what? We saw that first on Facebook. But you can check it out on a YouTube, too. Get some, get some free content, all right? Now, with that being said, guys, let's get into our first lesson. Let's do this, all right? Let me prepare this lesson for you guys. I have this huge like 50 inch screen. So you guys are everywhere. I'm watching the comments. I'm watching myself. I'm seeing the special presentation at the end, guys. It's going to be good. All right. All right, guys. So first lesson, four pillars of the ATM business. All right. This is, I mean, guys, this is what got me started. This is what got Paul started. And he, I mean, his portfolio is generating, I think it's like twelve to like fifteen thousand dollars a month minimum. This is what's got our team member Brandon started, who has multiple ATM in dispensaries. And if you guys know about dispensaries, you know those are cash cows. You're talking about like two thousand dollars a month, all right? It's the fundamentals. It is the fundamentals. But before we even get into that, guys, how many guys want a startup guide? And what I mean by that, I mean the actual guide that breaks down the basics of the ATM business, because I'm going to break it down for you right now, but I don't know about you. I'm an auditory learner, but I also like to see. So I like to read along as I'm learning. 
how many guys want a copy of this free guide? Absolutely free. It's a PDF. I'll send you the link that covers the absolute basics of the cash ATM business. If that sounds like something you're interested, I want you to comment cash money. All right, cash money, just like the movie, guys. Comment cash money below. Either I will send you a copy of this, I'll send you a direct message or one of our team members because it's a PDF link, so we can't upload it. We can't put it in the comments. All right, guys, comment cash money because at the end of the day, you got to remember, whenever you're starting a business, you can't look at it as like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make it perfect all of a sudden, right? The opportunities themselves, they're not gonna just come about. They don't just happen. You create them. But the way you create those opportunities is first you take action. Before you can take action, what? You need some information. So you have to use the basics of any business before you get started to take action to create that opportunity, guys. It's a simple math formula right there, okay? That is what's going to scale you from $0 to $1,000 to a $1 million dollars to maybe even a billion dollars. Who knows? You might reach out to me a year from now. I'm like, hey, get them. Man, I started this biz this billion dollar business based on what you told me in 2023. That'd be the best thing I can hear. All right. So without further ado, guys, let's get into the lesson. So the four pillars of the ATM business. All right. So let me start you off with a little story, right? So the reason I got into the ATM business, in case this is your first life, right? Was because I was stuck in a nine to five. And when I say nine to five, it was realistically like nine to nine at a minimum, right? I was in law enforcement. I was working my ass off. And the reason why was because I appreciated the job. Don't get me wrong. I was paid pretty well. It was in the Bay Area in California. So the cost of living was high, but the pay was high also. So I thought to myself, I was like, you know what? How can I get financially free? Everyone else, all my coworkers, you know what they're doing? They're just working overtime. And it's no knock to them, but that's all we knew. We're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to trade my time for money. That's what everyone does. That's what they're taught as like the way to get ahead. That's the American dream. And there's nothing wrong with that. My parents were blue collar workers. My dad was a janitor. I get it. But I wanted something a little more. So I started off in a little bit of debt, to say the least. I had over $50,000 in debt. And this is credit card debt, guys, before I even got hired. I worked my ass off in overtime to get to zero. And I was, man, I was happy. When I got to zero net worth, <laughs> that was like the best day in my life. I was literally like, I was like jumping up in the locker room. Everyone's like, what's wrong with this guy? And I had like two copies in my hand. I'm like, guys, you don't understand. I'm worth nothing. And they're like, dude, this guy's gone. He's lost it. Because they couldn't understand. Like, this guy works so much overtime. How is he worth nothing? But I got to pay off all my debt. That's the best feeling. Then I thought to myself, okay. Well, I want to get away from this nine to five eventually, right? Working alone is going to save, you know, I'm going to get some money. I'm going to get some zeros in my bank account, but I'm not really going to get ahead because at the end of the day, if you're not working, guess what, guys? You're not getting paid because think about it. If you're not physically at work, you're not going to get paid. Yeah, you have paid time off, but that runs out. Then what happens? So you want to be making money while you sleep. So I worked every single day. And I was like, you know what? The, the paychecks were good. I was like, but this is not sustainable. How am I visiting my family? How am I going to take care of my future children, my future family? I'm not going to be able to. I was exhausted. I was sick of work. I was getting jaded. I'd always be mad. I'd go to family events and I'm just angry and I'd be taking naps and they're like, hey, don't mess with him. He's just mad. I was like, I don't want to be that person. How many guys are in a position like that where you're going to work every day Going up, you're showing up. Maybe you're making it just within the minute when you're supposed to start. And you're like, man, if I had an opportunity, I'd be out of here. The way I put it is like this. If you were to win the lottery and you would quit that same day, you're probably not that happy at that job. It's probably not something you want to do. And that was the position I was in. So I started researching all these business opportunities. I looked into everything. I signed up for drop shipping, if you guys know. And this is years ago before it was saturated. I signed up for drop shipping. I signed up for like day trading courses. I signed up for like crypto trading courses. I signed up for everything, guys. Notary, Turo, get around. Come on, guys. I can keep naming it. I thought about vending machines, but I was like, man, I mean, I'm strong, but I don't know if I could push 2,000 pounds, right? And I just didn't have the time. I'm going to keep it real. I didn't have the time to have a full-time business. So I made some investments, made some investments. I was a silent investor in a lot of things. The one thing that really took off, which I really appreciated, was ATMs. And here's the reason why. A friend of mine, he brought up the opportunity. He said, hey, you know, cash ATMs, great opportunity. And initially, I thought it was a scam. I was like, dude, what are you talking about? Cash ATMs. Like the banks can only own that. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm telling you right now, you can own a cash ATM. It's super simple. 
And he's like, look at this. Pulls out his phone. Google Maps. He's like, let me look up ATM on Google Maps. They all pop up. He starts clicking on it. He's like, hey, you notice that none of these ATMs say a bank name? And I'm like, yeah, that's that's a good point. He's like, yeah. Who do you think owns those ATMs? I'm like, I have no idea. That's why I'm telling you it's a scam. <laughs> he's like, yeah, that's a good point. But to get back to the topic, he's like, dude, those are all individually owned. He's like, let me break down the math for you. And this is what clicked for me, guys, because I'm not the smartest person. I served in the Marine Corps. There's a reason why they say point the claymore towards the enemy, because we're, we're not the smartest cookies at the end of the day. All right. I know what two plus two equals and I know how to save some money, but that's about it. So he broke it down for me. He's like, hey, you're going to own this ATM. You actually place it at a location where you're going to need cash. Think of all those places you need cash, barbershops, grocery stores, farmer's markets, uh, nail salons, liquor stores. Yeah, he just kept going down this list. I was like, all right, all right, all right. Get to the next point, bro. So he says, all right, you place that ATM there. You place a little bit of cash in there. It's typically about $1,000 to $3,000. And I was like, that's it? He's like, yeah. So you buy the ATM. It's typically about mm, like $2,500 to $3,000 for the ATM. You put another $1,000 to $3,000 in cash in there. And then you place it at that location. Someone's going to go to your ATM. They're going to take out cash. They get charged a fee by you because they're you're taking out your cash. So say they pull out 20 bucks. You charge them, say, $3. That's not a lot of profit, right? I'm like, yeah, that's not, that's not a lot of profit. He's like, yeah, no problem. But the $20 and the $3 will go back to your bank account the next day. So you already have that money back. Now imagine if just five people use our ATMs a day. So in my head, I'm already like hurting with the math, right? So five people use the ATM a day and they get charged $3 each. So five times three equals 15. So I'm like, I'm writing this out in my head. I'm like, all right, I'm confused now. So you're gonna make 15 bucks in profit a day. I'm like, okay. How many days are in a month? I'm like 30, obviously. I said, cool. So 15 times 30 equals 450. So all of a sudden, I'm like, man, the $15 didn't seem like a lot, but $450, man, that's that's a decent amount of money, right? How many guys would like to make an additional $450 a month passively right now? Comments, we'll say money. Comment money below, guys. If you think $450 a month passively, would help change or maybe at least assist your life. Maybe it's a bill. Maybe it's paying for coffee. Like I literally pay $6 for coffee, guys. So this would help me. Or maybe it's paying for the gas or the car note, whatever it is, guys, $450, right? It's not going to make you rich. I'm going to keep it real. This is the same mentality I had. I was like, I'm not going to get rich, but $450, that will do a decent amount of damage for my life, right? So he's like, hey, you're not going to get rich off this, but Show the vision, just like Buzz Lightyear, right? I got a lot of nieces and nephews. You guys ever seen Toy Story where Buzz Lightyear's like, he's like pointing, right? <laughs> and he's showing the vision. He's like, check this out, bro. We start with one and then we get number two and then we get number three. Then we pull our money together. We get number four and five. Now you times five times, we'll say $400. That's $2,000 a month. Now you get three times as many or four times as many because you only go one location at a time. Now you're looking at 2000 a month, 4000 a month, 6000 And that's not including if you get a phenomenal location generating you over $1,000 a month. Think about that. The golden goose locations like strip clubs or like freaking uh, dispensaries like our team member Brandon has. Those locations can make you over $5,000 a month. Paul himself has a dispensary that generates him over $5,000 a month, guys. And it just hit me. It was like a train hitting me. I was like, wait a second. How much did you say it starts to cost again? He's like, oh, it's typically about four figures. If you do it on your own, you're looking at getting the ATM. You got to do all, and there's all these moving parts. And I thought to myself, I was like, man, I don't have that much time. So I became a passive investor in that business. So I gave him the startup money. He had two locations. It was a liquor store and uh, it was either a grocery store or a bar. I started with. That's how passive I was. I literally was like, hey, what's your wire information? So I wired on the money. We get started. We start generating about, it was about $700 I was taking home from that business. So I was hooked because at the end of the day, guys, when you make your first dollar outside of work, I don't care if you're mowing lawns. I don't care if you're selling uh, freaking Pokemon cards on eBay like one of my friends does. It don't matter. You make that dollar, you better tape that thing to a window. I was so proud, guys. I was like, man, I literally just generated money outside of my, my actual business or actually job. I thought to myself, this is worth more than a thousand hours of overtime because at the end of the day, I'm like, man, I can make this money while I'm what? While I'm not working. So 
when it comes down to it, guys, it comes down to generating revenue while you are sleeping, guys. And I know that was a long drawn out story, but that's the value of a business. And that's why I focused on the ATM business first, because it was a passive investment I made while working. And eventually it went from dollars to a hundreds, guys, passively. So let me break down the basics, guys, of how to start your ATM business. So the first thing you need, guys, all right, is going to be your LLC. And the reason why I bring up the LLC, it's it's for a reason. So when it comes down to it, guys, you want to protect yourself. I was in a high profile, high risk profession. I was like, man, I can get sued any single day. I do. I step on the wrong sidewalk. I can get sued. That's an extreme example. But think about your lives. Think about what goes on day to day nowadays, guys. In the US, people love to sue people for no reason, right? We can't talk about things anymore. And I'm not, I'm not going to go into the politics or anything like that, but it comes down to protecting your neck, right? As Buster Rhymes used to say, you got to protect your neck. So imagine you're renting a place or you own a place and somebody trips on the sidewalk in front of your house. What do you do? First of all, you're going to check to make sure they're okay. But what are they going to say? It's like, all right, my neck. My back, my legs, everything hurts. So you already know where this is going. You're like, oh man. So they're going to look in your driveway and they'll be like, uh, Honda Civic, we'll see if it's financed. All right. Then they look at the house and they're like, uh, the house, is it rented? Okay. All right. Can't go after that. What else can I do? Then they're like, oh, what's that little logo you got there? Is that an ATM? And like, yeah, I got an ATM business. What do you think they're going to go after? When they find out how much money you're making passively in that business, they're like, mm -mm, I want some of that. Give me some of that. So here's the problem in the US right now. We're so quick to sue. If you don't have that business in an Hey guys, I, my power went out. Let's see if you guys can still hear me. Hold on one second. I am literally on battery backup. <laughs> oh, 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 guys, the matrix is upon us. I like this. I like that comment. All right, guys, comment. Listen, if you guys can hear me, I need to know if you guys can hear me, All right? Let's see. I'm literally on battery backup right now. I ran to the garage. I was like, where's that little generator at? I got one light above me, guys. So we're going to make it happen. I'm on my I'm on my hotspot. I'm on my laptop. Hey, it don't matter. ATM together, we improvise, we overcome, adapt. And if you're in the military, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because at the end of the day, a little power outage ain't going to take us out. We're going to keep talking, all right? Here we go. Here we go. All right. Thank God it's not the end of the world. Hey, yeah. Thank God. All right. So, guys, let me get back to the lesson, all right? So when it comes to the ATM business, right? We're going to make this quick because I don't want my laptop battery to die. I don't want the cell phone battery to die. I got to get this information out to you guys, right? So when it comes down to the ATM business, guys, it's like this. You want an LLC. You want to keep that simple. And the reason why is because at the end of the day, you want to protect your business. You want to protect your assets. So when you're forming an LLC, guys, there's a few things you need, right? So the first thing you're going to need is the business address. Where is the business going to be? Is it going to be your home address, which is going to be the cheapest? Are you going to use a virtual business address, et cetera? And if you want the free guide, because we actually have a guide and I got to make this quick. We have a guide that breaks down how to form your LLC for the ATM business. Comment LLC below. I will follow up after this live when I get my power on and I'll personally send you a copy of that video or the guide, whichever one you want, guys. Comment LLC. So you need that virtual business address or your home address or whatever address you're going to use. And then the next thing you need to know is how many people are your LLC. Because at the end of the day, it's like this. Your LLC is going to either be yourself, your business partners, maybe your family, your spouse, et cetera. Who, who knows? 
Who knows at the end of the day? So you have to treat it like it's a business ahead of time. You need to know who's going to be a part of that business ahead of time, because the worst thing you do is start filling out that paperwork and then you realize, oh, you know what? I have another co-investor. I need to change the percentages, right? So keep it simple. Make sure you know ahead of time. And then you want to know your actual business name, because at the end of the day, if you don't have a business name, what are you going to do? And this is probably the number one thing that keeps people hung up, guys. I'm telling you right now. I am telling you right now, this is the number one thing that keeps people hung up. And the reason why is because at the end of the day, it comes down to creativity. You're like, man, I got this LLC. I want to make sure everybody knows what it's about. Keep it simple, guys. Imperfect action. All right. Success favors speed, guys. Simplicity scales and complexity fails. I'm telling you right now, don't worry about the name. Just form it. At the end of the day, you can change the name, but you want to start generating money. That's the first focus. Who cares? Who cares if your name, I mean, let's put it this way. Think of one of the most profitable businesses in the world. Google. People back in the day were probably like, Google? Like, wh what kind of name is that? And little did they know, years down the road, it's going to be a multi-billion dollar business. Nobody cares. Once you start making money, nobody's going to care, guys, right? So you, get, you do that. And then the next thing you need, guys, you need to write this down. You need the NAICS code for the ATM business. Keep it super simple. It doesn't matter what it stands for, guys. It's literally just a classification for your business, all right? So write this down, guys. The NAICS code for the ATM business is going to be 522320, all right? The NAICS code for the ATM business, guys, I'm telling you right now, you need to write this down. It's going to be 522320, all right? So with that being said, guys, you have your NAICS codes, you form your LLC, then you want to get your EIN, right? Your EIN, your employer identification number. If you have an LLC, you need an EIN, all right? Get that straight from the IRS website. I can't tell you how many times people have been scammed. They've been scammed from these follow-up, like these copycat websites that charge you like 600 bucks for an EIN number. It's completely free. And it's, you can actually file it right now. It'll take you like two minutes. So make sure you get your EIN number, all right? From there, guys, you need pillar number two. Pillar number two in the ATM business is going to be your actual bank account, guys. And I know you're probably wondering, right? Let me fix my camera to get to this lesson. All right. So I know you're probably wondering. You're like, hey, get them. What are you talking about your bank account? Why can't I just use my personal account? I'm telling you right now, you cannot use your personal account in the ATM business. And the reason why is because banks look at ATM businesses as high risk. And what I mean by that is they say, hey, it's a cash only business. We don't know what you're doing. Straight up. There's been a lot of bad apples that have gained a bad reputation for the business. And I'm telling you right now, we have clients that are federal judges, DEA agents, cops, firefighters, nurses, doctors. They don't care about that. They're thinking of that one bad incident you see on the news. So you want to make sure you have a business checking account that's appropriate for the ATM business, right? What I mean by that is the bank has to know you're having an ATM business because what's going to happen is they're going to shut you down. Imagine you have your phenomenal location. It's at a location, you're making 30 bucks a day. Then you get a call from that merchant and they're like, hey, get them. What's going on? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like the ATM's out of service. I'm like, what do you mean? It says it's online. It's like, no, it says error. You go there, you're like, man, you can't figure it out. Then you get an actual email from your bank and they're like, hey, we shut you down. We found out you have an ATM business. Make sure you start with the right foundation. That's why we call these the four pillars, guys. Start with the right foundation for your ATM business, Okay. The third thing you guys are going to need is actually going to be your processor, all right? And I'm not talking about Windows. I'm not talking about Apple. I'm talking about your actual processor for the ATM business. Simply put, guys, I like to keep this simple. That is the company or the network behind your ATM. Think of it as like cell phone service, all right? Like the cell phone service I'm using for this live, okay? Think of it like that. The processor connects your ATM to the bank. And it also connects it to the customer's bank accounts, okay? So what that means is that ATM needs to be connected. So with processing, there's a lot of companies out there. We actually offer processing ourselves. When you're looking for processing for your ATM business, there's a few things you want to look out for. You want to make sure, first of all, there's no contracts. I remember back in the day when I used to go from actual singular. You guys remember singular wireless? Man, I was trying to get the first iPhone. Remember it was at and that only offered iPhones back then. So... When I try to switch, they're like, mm -mm, there's an early termination fee. You owe us $350. So I was like, man, that's like half the iPhone price. Later, guess what happens? AT&T buys out Singular and they're like, oh, sorry, we can't reimburse you. I'm like, what? 
It's the same thing with processors nowadays in the ATM business, guys. They'll try to lock you into contracts, these long contracts that you don't understand. Guess what happens? You don't read the fine print, just like when you're signing up for that application. And then guess what happens? On the back end, you're like, man, why are they taking fees? You try to get out of it and they try to charge you. That's what happened to Paul, guys. You have to make sure you protect yourself when you're starting the business. So when you're starting your ATM business, make sure you get no contracts, you keep all of your profits, and they give you discounted ATMs, which goes into the ATMs. You want to always buy brand new ATMs. And the reason why is because at the end of the day, what's going to happen is this. You don't know what that used ATM has gone through. Let's keep it real. You don't know where it's been. Has it been in the rain? Has it been at some, some really bad spot? Has it been in a spa where like the hot tubs like steaming the internals? And then you're like, man, why is everything rusted? Always buy brand new when it comes to the ATM business, guys, right? And let me get to the last part, guys. So now you have your actual ATM, you have your processor, you have your bank account, your LLC. Well, of course, you're going to need your location. When it comes down to it, guys, you must make sure you have a premium location in the ATM business. And the way you do that is you make sure it is cash driven, right? There's a lot of foot traffic. And you have a good relationship with the merchant, guys. Those are the three p pivotal things when it comes to the ATM business. Because without those three things, you're going to have problems. When I say cash-driven, here's an example, guys. So in California, the lotto tickets, they have to be bought in cash. So what happens? You can't use your credit card. You can't use your debit card. What do people do? Well, they need cash. Well, the business itself typically will charge you for cash back. So what do people do? They go to the ATM. They say, hey, I want to use that ATM because I know my bank's going to reimburse me for that fee. You as the business owner, you keep the fee, but the bank reimburses the clients. So what is that? It's a cash-driven location, guys. So your location does not need to be cash only. You want to make sure it's cash-driven, guys, right? So that is it when it comes down to the ATM business, guys. We need to get to our next level because this or our next uh, lesson because this went a little longer than possible, guys, all right? So if you're excited to learn exactly how you can actually start your BTM business. That's your Bitcoin ATM business with no personal funds, guys. I want you to comment, fund me. F-U-N-D-M-E, fund me. I want you to comment that. Show me how excited you are. Help me with the algorithms. People disappear. They're like, man, get them disappeared. The matrix got them. We got to get off this live. You got to get back to the original viewers, guys, all right? So while I prep this lesson, um, I know I have Alex in the background. He's going to be getting ready soon. What I'm going to do, guys, is actually break down the basics of the BTM business, all right? Because I know a lot of you guys are just hearing about this, all right? I, I totally understand. You're probably like, man, this BTM thing, what are you guys talking about? And a lot of people have actually come over because what happened recently? Banks went down. There were some major banking issues that happened, right? Lots of layoffs. And then on top of that, they're like, man, this Bitcoin price is going up. So what are people doing? They're talking about Bitcoin. I bring this up for a reason, guys. We practice what we preach. Back in December, when I brought up BTMs and Bitcoin was at like 16,000. And you can see the live. It's literally in our Facebook group. You can click it. It'll tell you the same thing. I told everyone, make sure you start getting into BTMs. And the reason why is because when the price starts going up, all of a sudden, all these influencers start to pop up. They're like, hey, you know, let me talk about Bitcoin and all that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about being a broker. How many guys have ever been to a location where they charge you for a service? We'll say like a money exchange, check cashing, cash advance, anything, guys. How many of you guys have gone through that? I have. I've personally gone through it. And I'm just like, man, these guys are raking it in. Because you see the line and you look to your right, you look to your left and you're like, man, they charge me $11 and there's 10 people in line. That's 11 times 10 is 110. And then there's 30 days in a month and you're like, that's a lot of money. Being a broker, guys, is where the money's at. Being the middleman, real estate sales, mortgage companies, car financing personal loans, whatever. That's where the real is money is at because you're in the middle, guys. You're charging them fee for that service. That's why we bring up the BTM business. So just for a quick overview of how the BTM business works, guys, you're just a broker. I'll keep it simple. Hey, don't worry about the price. Don't worry about all these extra news articles coming out. You are just a broker. So you actually own the BTM. You place it at a location. It's typically right next to a cash ATM also. 
So you place it there. You typically have your own cash in there and you're going to charge people to buy and sell Bitcoin. That's it. You charge them a convenience fee because at the end of the day, it's convenient because there's no other way in the world to transfer actual cash. I actually have some cash here. Cash for crypto. It's impossible. Yeah, you can deposit it in your bank account and connect it to an exchange and wait two or three days for it to settle. That's an option. But right now, if you had cash in your hand and you wanted to buy Bitcoin or you wanted to sell Bitcoin, guess what? There's no other way. What if it's a Saturday? What if it's a Sunday evening? There's no other way other than BTMs, guys. So you're the broker. You charge typically about 10 to 15%. Now, customers will go to your machine. They typically are putting in about like $1,000. That's about the average receipt. So they put in about $1,000. They get charged a fee by you. We'll say 15%. So you're going to make $150 off of that transaction, guys, right? Now you multiply that by, we'll say 10 people in a month. That's $1,500 in profit, guys. So you start seeing where the potential is with that. And that's if they just put in $1,000. We see transactions for $7,000, for $4,000, for $11,000. I'm serious. Well, you're having different business owners that own like nail salons. They own barbershops and they're like, hey, I want to put my cash in Bitcoin. I don't want to put it in the bank account or you have people that are under banks. So I bring this up for a reason, guys, because the BTM business, you can profit a lot. However, it's typically a higher cost entry to get into it. And Alex is actually going to cover this in a second. But typically for the BTM business, you're looking at a five figure investment because what you want to actually have the BTM, you want to have the cash, you need to own some crypto, you need to actually have compliance. There's a few things that go on to it, guys. It's a little complex. So what happens? We get a lot of people. I've gotten hundreds of people messaging me like, hey, get them. What would you personally do to fund a BTM business if you don't have the funds yourself? And I tell them straight up. I'm like, hey, what I have done personally for success has been real simple, guys. All right. So I got to change the camera angle. That, that's, how, that's how serious this is getting, guys. So what I have done to start my BTM business and actually expand my business is I've used OPM, which is other people's money. So all that means, it's super simple. What that means is I'm not using my personal funds. I'm either using co-investors, family, friends, or funding, right? So I bring this up for a reason, because at the end of the day, the market movers or the people that are focusing on large businesses, they're not using their own personal funds, guys. They're not using their own personal funds. Why do you think they sell stocks to companies? They're using your money. Why do you think they take out loans? Because they don't care. They're like, hey, we're going to make the money back. Why would we use our own personal funds if we can use someone else's money? So how I scaled the BTM business was, first of all, yeah, I had machines on my own. But I had a military buddy from the Marine Corps. He wanted to co-invest. So guess what? We went half-half on two machines. And then what I did, I was like, you know what? Yeah, I have the funds available, but I want to be able to jump on opportunities because I understand the market is going to change. And this is back in December, guys. I saw the writing on the wall. I was like, you know what? I think some things are going to happen later in 2023. That's why I said, guys, the first live of January, I said 2023 is going to be your year to make a move. It's time stamped. I told you guys to comment, make an accountability comment to yourself. 2023 is going to be your guys' time to make a move. So here's what I did. I took out financing for some machines. I thought to myself, you know what? I already know how much money these machines are going to profit. I have a premium location finding service. They're going to find me locations. And that's what we're doing. So seven figure Alex, let me get him in here. He's going to break down exactly guys, how you guys can use personal funds. You don't have to use them, but if you want personal loans or different types of funding opportunities to start your BTM business, right? So let me see if uh, Alex, let me actually get him in here. Hold on one second. Let's do this. Because he might even be having uh, internet issues too. And I know he's down in San Diego. So let's see. Alex, can you hear us? Hold on one second, guys. Let's do this. Make sure he actually gets in here. All right. Let me see if he is in here, guys. And I'm seeing these comments. I'm seeing a, <laughs> I'm seeing some funny comments here, guys. Well, Alex is going to be joining us in about one minute. Hold on one second. Let's see.
until then, guys, right? I'm seeing some comments here. I'm seeing uh, banks collapse. Today was a huge bull run on crypto. Correct, right? And just to be clear, when I mentioned BTMs, guys, I'm not telling you to invest in crypto. I'm absolutely not. Paul himself was like, I hate crypto now because he, he dealt with some exchanges that went down and he lost a decent amount of money. So what I'm saying is be the middle man or be the middle woman, because guess what? When the price of crypto goes up, you make money. When the price of crypto goes down, you guys make money. Because guess what happens? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, when you're around your family and grandma's like, hey, you know, um, I, was, I was thinking about like this, this Bitcoin thing you guys were talking about. Guess what happens? They go to a familiar institution that they're used to, which are what? ATMs. So they know that they can put cash in there and they can put it in there and you're going to charge a convenience for you guys because it's convenient. Imagine they're able to go at midnight to a donut shop. There's a BTM there while they're getting their glazed donut or, you know, their cinnamon twist that I like guys, right? They get charged and it takes about five minutes or they can send that money overseas guys. It's absolutely phenomenal guys, right? So let's do this. It looks like Alex is having some internet issues. So we're going to continue. It's all good. We're going to save him for next week, guys. All right. So let me break down a little bit about funding, guys. All right. And I know it a decent amount. And the reason why is because we deal with it on the business side. We have to deal with business loans, business lines of credit. And then, of course, like I'm talking lots and lots of business credit cards. So once you start going down like the rabbit hole of like business credit, like it, man, it's addicting because you start realizing, man, you can start using other people's money. So when it comes down to it, guys, when you're funding a business, there's a few different options. So the first thing you can do is going to be your personal funds. That's option number one. You just literally, you have your cash savings. Maybe you have, you know, a savings account, a piggy bank, whatever. You can use that to start your business. But if you want to leverage additional money that you don't have, there's a few different routes you can go. The first thing people do is they'll get a business credit card, guys. This is an example. It's actually blurred, but American Express is one of the companies that we actually go to just because they're much more lenient to give you business credit cards. That's an option. So when we started ATM businesses, Paul specifically, he always brings this up. He used OPM. He used 0% interest business credit cards. The easiest one to apply for, and we are not associated whatsoever, guys, but they work. And there's a reason why we have like, literally, if you look, I'll show you, I have like literally every single Amex business credit card. The reason why is because they're very quick to give you that actual business credit. And it's usually 0% interest. So if you can literally get $15,000, $20,000 to start your business and there's no interest whatsoever, why wouldn't you? Because the revenue from that business, say it's a cash ATM business, it's going to easily pay that off. And as long as you're disciplined with your money, which I know you guys are, you're going to easily be able to pay that off. And there's literally no extra fees because it's no interest for a year. So imagine how much revenue you're going to make from your ATM or BTM business within a year. A year, guys. That's a lot of time. Yeah, a year goes by fast, but guess what happens in the year? At about March of next year, there's going to be a major event for Bitcoin. So what do you think is going to happen to the price? Just like a rocket, guys. I'm not a rocket scientist, but I know things are going to happen in the future when it comes to Bitcoin. So imagine you place your actual ATM or BTM before this rush, and guess what's going to happen? You're going to be sitting there. It's almost like buckets. It's almost like it's pouring rain, guys. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to put some buckets out there because I know the rain's going to come even more. You're setting yourself up for success. That's another way to get into it. But what typically happens with credit cards, especially business credit cards, you need a higher actual um, credit score. You're typically looking about the 700 range. So the second question we get is like, well, I don't have that credit. What can I do? So what we recommend is usually funding. The easiest way, especially when it's a brand new business, is going to be personal loans. And let me break this down for you guys. All right. So. With business credit, yes, you can get business loans, but the process itself can take like 30 days at least. And they require a lot of documents and they're only going to base it off your personal income first. So what typically happens when you're starting a business and you're like, hey, you know what? I can't get business credit. You have to use your own personal information to get that loan. Because the only difference is who the information's under. Is it under the business name or your information? But what you can do is this, and this is what I've done. You can take a personal loan for your business, whatever it is, whether it's ATMs, BTMs, 
they're going to be able to fund you up to $50,000, guys, to start your business. So think about that for a second. So they're going to base it off your personal information. Typically, you're going to want like 650-ish, 680 credit to do that and a decent amount of income. You're talking about like in the 60s or 70,000 at least in income, but you can use that to fund your business. So once you start generating revenue, say two months, three months down the road, when you're making a decent amount of money from your business, then you can actually go to that same company and say, hey, my business is making money. I'm projecting it to go like this. You don't have to mention Bitcoin, you don't have to mention any of that, but you just say, hey, I'm going to be generating more money. I'm scaling my actual ATMs or I'm scaling my BTMs. So I want to have the revenue to be able to actually start generating more. And I want to continue the business relationship with you guys. They're going to hear a lot of key words. They're like, what? It's like when you go to a girl, like, you know what? I, well, I'm not even going to say that, right? It's like when you go to a significant other, all right? And you're like, I want to spend a significant amount of time with you. Guess what happens? Your, your cheeks start going red. Even my cheeks go red. If somebody said that to me, I'm like, man, I feel good. So that business or that bank or that credit union, whatever, they're going to say, you know what? I see the potential in this person. I see the potential in their business. They actually took action. They're making money within the first few months. We want to continue our relationship with you. That's how it works, guys. Amex, I've been with them since 2013. That is 10 years. I'm telling you right now, it literally says on here, member since 2013. They value that relationship. If I ask for anything, they're like, and that's when it comes down to it when it comes to business funding also. How many of you guys have had a relationship? At, and I'm not talking about actual relationships, guys. I'm talking about business relationships. We'll, we'll even take it a step back. How many of you guys have gone to the same coffee shop or the same restaurant continually? They remember your name. What do they do? They're, they give you way more leeway. It's just inherent in our human nature, guys. They're going to give you leeway. So they're going to say, hey, you know what? Maybe they put a little extra whipped cream on your, your, uh, your mocha, whatever. Maybe they give you some extra French fries. Or maybe they say, oh, you forgot your credit card. Don't worry about it. It's the same thing with funding. So if you start your funding with the same institution, you say, hey, I'm going to start with a personal loan. And then you decide, hey, I want some business credit with you guys also. They look at that entire portfolio and they want to keep you. Because they know, you know what, long term, you're going to be worth a lot of money and they want to make sure they're there with you while you're scaling, guys. All right. So that's what I would recommend when it comes down to starting your BTM business, guys, is using personal funds initially. I won't go into the lessons Alex is going to have. I'm actually going to probably have them on next week. But what I am going to go over, guys, is actually how you personally can start your BTM business the fastest, guys. All right. And after that, I mean, after this presentation, guys, because I'm actually loading it up right now, Tony, right now, we're going to break down exactly how you can get a second free BTM or ATM location, guys, all right? I'm telling you right now, it is never too late, guys, because I know we get a lot of these questions like, hey, you know what? I'm 30, I'm 40, I'm 50. I'm telling you right now, before we even get into this last lesson, it's never too late to be what you might have been. Think about that for a second. I want you to really listen to what I said. It is never too late to be what you might have been. It's chapters, guys. It is chapters in your life. When it comes down to business, I'm telling you right now, most people don't have a business that really kicks off until five, six years down the road. So don't think that because maybe you've had some past failures, maybe you made some bad decisions. We all make bad decisions. Don't think that it's too late for you. I'm telling you right now, I'm the best example. I make bad decisions every single day. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't know what's going on. I knock on wood. I pray to everybody. I'm like, hey, I make terrible decisions and I keep recovering because I'm consistent and you have to be consistent in your daily action, guys. Your motivation alone is not going to save you. I'm telling you right now, motivation will start you Discipline is what's going to take you to the finish line, doing those daily tasks, repeating to yourself, you know what, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it happen by any means. I'm going to treat today like it's my last day. I'm telling you right now, guys, you have to take action and you have to take consistent action. That's what's going to get you to the future, guys. All right. So let me load up my presentation to go over exactly what is going to be the fastest way for you to start your BTM business in 2023? Because I'm telling you right now, if you don't get started now, you're going to have issues. And the reason why is because as crypto prices go up, guess what happens? People start wanting to buy. Imagine you see a land opportunity, 
right? People are driving across the desert and you're like, man, I should really install a gas station right here. I should really install an electric vehicle charging station. And then all the Teslas start losing all their energy halfway through and then somebody else beats you to it. That's going to be a crappy film. Let's keep it real, guys. So...